and welcome to HTV. Welcome back if you joined us for our pre-stream. We are excited to be here, to say the least. My name is Jess. My name is Tom. It's great to be with you on this sunny day here in London. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. If you have joined us for the first time this morning, or this evening, wherever you're watching, um, or you've joined us for a couple of weeks and you're thinking, oh, I'm still not sure, why don't you stan scan this QR code? Or you could scan the QR code and <laughs> or head to hcb.org forward slash welcome, fill in a little form, and someone from the team will be in touch with you. Hey, we had a lovely visit from Stan last week, one of our members of the congregation, who has <laughs> been watching link. online for a little while and has come back in person. Also, Nana and Tom were here this morning, who've been watching yes. online for a little while come for their first time. So please do come and join us in the building. We'd love to see you here. And if you join this morning, if you can get here in time, or if you're watching online, Nikita Ainsworth is speaking uh, this morning, uh, uh, one of our clergy team. And if you'd like to access this service through British Sign Language, then head to the website htb.org forward slash live stream. And Charlotte is there on the Zoom call to help you with the service in BSL. Um, sorry, I'm trying to get up. We did a vote we in the did. chat. If you're watching the chat and you're thinking, what's going on? Well, in the pre-service chat, we were talking about Focus, which is our um, church network's extended weekend away in July, at the end of July. And we were talking about camping and glamping. Yeah. And we've asked the question in the chat, do you prefer camping or glamping? 52-48, so it's 52% I'm a camper. Wow. I'm. What are you? A glamper. Oh, you. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to say it like that. I wish I, like, in my head, I'm a real camper. We yeah. looked at a motorhome yesterday. We might borrow for focus. I wasn't sure if I was allowed yeah, to say. Yeah, I'll out it. I've told everyone. I'm pleased you've outed it. But you don't yeah. have to have a motorhome. We've never had one before. We're borrowing it. Anyway, um, if you've joined us for the first time and you've, there's, there is a chat box if you're watching live, we'd love to hear what you think and uh, any questions you've got. Kimberly John is in the chat. Jess and I will be there, but you'll see our names with a spanner next to them. And that just uh, not not notates, that just says that we're helping run the chat. I was trying to help, but I had no idea what words you were going chat for. Coordinators. Um, it's also amazing just to, like, during worship, to put in, like, praise hands. I don't know. It feels like we're watching it all together and we're all part of this one bigger thing. Shall I pray before yes. we head into the service? Let's do it. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that wherever we're watching from and wherever we're joining from today, we are part of this. And Lord, you can meet with us wherever we are. Lord, I pray that you, can, you fill us all with your Holy Spirit right now, whether we're here in the building or whether we're in a park or at home or on a beach, wherever we are, Lord, fill us with your Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
just raise a shout of praise to Jesus this morning. To our God who reigns above all, who reigns over every situation. Nothing is bigger than our God. Nothing can match his greatness. And this is why we can sing so boldly this morning. And once again I'm here to say I love you Once again I'm here to bring you praise Even if it's broken I will lift up my hallelujah Oh, the same one more time Say once again I'm here
voices going. Let's just raise up a shout of praise this morning and defy all logic. You know, we can find so many reasons to be silent. We can find so many reasons not to praise. But our God is constant. He is faithful and He is true. He is constant. He is faithful and He is true. And He is worthy of our praise, no matter what we're feeling, no matter what situation. He is faithful and just to intervene. So we can sing our praise is not a mess, but because we are full of faith this morning. So God, we pray that your faith arises within our hearts this morning. Wherever people are watching, for everyone in this room, Jesus, we pray, let your faith in us arise this morning.
in the Old Testament says we're not of those who shrink back but of those who have faith if you like it we're not those who shrink back but we're those who step forward and I think the invitation to some of us this morning is to step forward into the plans and the promises that God has for you to step into the fact that you are a son or daughter of the living God who loves you, to step in to the plan that Jesus Christ who rose from the dead, his resurrection power lives in you by the promised Holy Spirit. He wants you to step forward this morning into the promise and the plan that he has good works ahead for you. I think some of us, we may have come this morning and there's, there's issues at work, there's issues in our family, maybe there's health issues. We're not those of those who shrink back, but those who step forward and have faith. And what the Lord has for you is a life of faith, where there is in all circumstances joy, in all circumstances peace, and in all circumstances hope. So Lord God, we pray this morning, help us be of those who step forward, who have faith. Help us to step into all you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you like to take a seat as we continue in prayer? Heavenly Father, we lift up our world to you, a world that you love so much. And this morning we remember places where there is conflict, unrest and immense human suffering. Lord, we pray for your peace to be poured out, for your comfort to encircle those who love you and for your love to rise up. Lord, we remember Ukraine and we pray for those who are fleeing for their lives, who feel fear and anxiety, for those who grieve and mourn over lost loved ones. Lord, we pray for peace with justice in Ukraine. And Lord, we know that your heart is for the poor, the orphan, the widow, and the foreigner. And Lord, we pray that you would give strength to the weary and power to the weak in our world that is full of troubles and darkness and despair. We pray that Jesus, you would bring light and life. You would bring your healing power to our world and particularly want to remember areas in our world where there is poverty, where there is deep economic inequality, where there is racial injustice and gender violence. Lord, we pray and cry out for your help that you would cease this war. You would cease all that is happening that is not right in our world and you would empower your people to be your hands and your feet to love and to serve, to be people of peace, people of healing and people of hope in a dark and weary world. And would all glory will be given to your son, Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. amen. And we also, Lord, we pray for our church and for our community. We wanna pray, for, Lord, for all of the young people in our church, the young people um, that we're connected to, especially those who are going through a season of exams. Lord, we pray for those who will be taking GCSEs in this coming week, for those who will be taking university exams, A-levels, all exams. Lord, would you be their strength? Would you be their confidence? And would you give them peace, that you are with them? And we pray for our community as well, Lord. We know you are the Lord and the leader who washes his disciples' feet. And we pray as we serve those in our community, 
you would meet their needs. We pray for all those who are uh, joining us during the week for the Ukrainian um, Refugee Center, and we pray that you would be amongst them, meet with all their needs. We pray for all those who be uh, join, who have been and will be joining us again for Alpha on Wednesday. Lord, we pray that you would serve them, you would supply their needs, that you would meet with people who seek your face. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, a very warm welcome to HTB, particularly if you're new or you're here for the first time. And we want to welcome everyone in the room in person, but we also want to welcome everyone who is joining us online on the live stream. And um, why don't we give everyone who's joining us online a very warm HTB welcome. <laughs> As you can see, we are back running in person, and it is so good to be in the room, isn't it, Ben? We were running 11 services across six different sites on Sunday. So if you like what you see, please come and visit us. Please come in person. We would love to chat with you and welcome you to this worshiping community. Everything that happens at HTB happens because of your praying, your serving, and your giving. And we want to thank you for praying because we believe in a God who hears our prayers and responds, whose heart is inclined to hear and to respond to his people. We are a church that loves you to join a team. It can't happen without you. The worship, the production, the cafe, the welcome, the hosting, the car park, Alpha, the shelter, it all happens because of this amazing team and we would love you to come and join a team and get to know people. Um, and thank you so much for your giving and your generosity. It all happens because of your radical giving and if you'd like to find out more about how you can contribute to everything that's happening in the life of our church, please visit htb.org forward slash giving or scan the QR code um, and you can find out how you can support everything that's happening here here at HDB. And we have a new way of giving today. We do have a new way of giving. After two years, I think we might have some buckets, real <laughs> buckets, for anyone who still carries cash. Because I know there's a few of you out there. Um, we just want to make it as easy as we possibly can. So we will be um, passing the buckets out today as we watch some of the videos. But yes, ben. yes. Um, as Catherine said, your giving goes to so many things, one of which is Alpha, and, and this Wednesday is Alpha Week 3. And if you have never done Alpha before, we'd love you to join us this Wednesday evening here in the church um, for Alpha. So as we take up our offering, um, take a look at this to find out a bit more about what's going to happen here on Wednesday. London lifestyle is hectic. Uh, you're constantly moving from A to B and da -da 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 -da. Alpha gives you opportunity to pause and to, um, and to really ask the big questions about life. My experience when I first came to Alpha, do you know what? In the beginning, I was a little bit nervous and anxious especially as I was walking down that dark drive. But as I went around the corner, I saw people queuing up and I was like, okay, there's, there's other humans here. I got inside and I was shocked. It was a vibe. Who's Alpha for? It's for you. <laughs> it's for anyone that's got questions. Um, but specifically, I'd say it's for anyone that doesn't necessarily come from a church background, that wouldn't necessarily call themselves a Christian, and you just want to explore and find out more about the Christian faith. Let me, let me stop. Before you get to the group, you smell food. <laughs> and that's the most important thing. You smell food and you're greeted with all these um, smiles and then you're placed in a group with with a few other people that are in the same position as you. We listen to a talk. So the theme of the talks are like, is there more to life than this? Uh, who is Jesus? If God is real, like how can he guide me? And then afterwards we break up into a group, we share how we feel. It's an opportunity for you to ask questions. What I love about Alpha is that, you know, it's respectful. You know, no question is stupid. If you don't want to speak, you don't have to speak. Some people have been atheists, some people have been from other faiths. It's a whole big stew of questions and thoughts, um, which is good because then you start to hear from different people's perspectives. It makes the conversation juicy. Before I did Alpha, I was just searching. I don't know, I guess I thought I had it figured out. But as nervous as I was, it ended up being the highlight of my week, but it was probably the highlight of, of my year because I got to engage in deep questions. There was just no space to have that anywhere else in London. Like, where else do you go and have those conversations? And I was able to do that with people 
that looked like me, people that didn't look like me, and we just journeyed together. So I made good friends, I had good food, but more importantly, I discovered more about who Jesus is, and, um, and that, for me, transformed my life. Nice costume change, Catherine. It was quick, quick on the side. There we go. Um, in just over nine weeks, we are going on holiday together. Um, for the first time in a couple of years, Focus is back in person. Um, from the 28th to the 31st of July, we're going away uh, to the Newark Showground, which is just outside Nottingham. Um, and we would love you to be there with us. If you've never been before, um, Focus is our chance to go away uh, to spend more time getting to know each other, to meet with God. Uh, we say that something extraordinary happens when we gather together at Focus. And we're going to be gathering together um, with thousands of people from churches across the HDB um, network. And we are so looking forward to it. Um, there's going to be um, big top worship and um, main brilliant speakers. There's going to be seminars. There's going to be uh, groups for children, uh, for youth. Uh, there's going to be uh, so much fun. Catherine, what are you looking forward to? I am most looking forward to making four years of friendships over four days. Um, that is the beauty of Focus. You come, you meet new people, you regather with old people, and um, it's just an amazing time of fun, fellowship, family, and community on a mission, I think. I'm so excited that uh, we will have each service will have a community pitch, we'll have a HTB village, where we'll gather. I mean, there might even be a hot tub or a fridge or a bar um, and some lots of sofas and just a space where we can gather and spend more time. After two years apart in this pandemic, I think that there is such a, a hunger and a thirst to hear from God, to be like, I actually want to know, God, what you want for my life. And when we set time aside and we're like, actually, Lord, I'm just going to give you these three days, and because actually this year it's a slightly shorter, you don't have to take so much time off work, which is another bonus, but you can come for the weekend and just hear from God. I've had, um, I've actually had a prophetic word given to me at Focus, which has completely transformed my life. And I would say that I would not be here today if it wasn't for some of the just powerful encounters with the Holy Spirit that I have had. And so be encouraged that God might wanna use you to speak to someone as you're lining up to the food truck. There is gonna be every single option available at Focus this year. There's gonna be catered camping, there's gonna be tents, there's gonna be bunker bins, there's gonna be caravans, there's gonna be every form of accommodation. And we know that for many of us, it will be your first time coming to Focus. If you don't know, or if you have questions, or you're a little bit like, what do I do with a tent? There is a team of people who cannot wait to help you, and they'll be wearing these wonderful Focus t-shirts, and they'll be here to answer all your questions and help you get it set up. But everyone is invited and uh, we're, we're praying. We're praying for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit because we know that at this time, it is Jesus that transforms lives. It is Jesus who gives us that fuel that we just don't have in our own human strength. And we cannot wait to gather together and hear what the, what the Lord wants to say and how he wants to lead us through this season. So book on, ask your questions, and we can't wait to see you there. We cannot wait. All the information is on the website as well. Our speaker today is Nikita Ainsworth. Nikita is part of the clergy team. She's ordained in the Church of England. She's also part of the Alpha team driving forward Alpha at HTB. And she's also passionate about Rising Gen and plays a massive part on the students team. So would you join me in welcoming Nikita Ainsworth? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, the passage we are going to be looking at today is Hebrews 6, verses 16 to 20. They say this. 
People swear by someone greater than themselves, and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. I want to speak to you this morning about how to depend on God's faithfulness. I grew up in London um, to two parents who weren't Christians that had kind of no background with Christianity at all. Church wasn't a thing for us, apart from one Christmas when my mum forced me to go to church and I made a deal with her that I would go if I could wear the leather sequin catsuit that I had just opened for Christmas to church. To give you a picture of what life looked like around this time, um, both parents had grown up in circumstances which didn't set them up well. My mum's own mum was 15 when she had her and had struggled with quite severe alcoholism for her whole life. And that kind of filtered down into my immediate family as well. So my parents had a really complicated relationship with each other and they struggled lots with drugs and alcohol addiction. Um, and they split up when I was four. Um, my dad was arrested and sent to prison. And um, so I stayed with my mum. And my mum was trying to juggle raising a young child, holding down a full-time job, all of the stuff that comes with like living human life and being a parent. And she found it really difficult, as anyone would. And so after a bit of time of doing that, my um, mum lost her job and we became homeless. So we lived in different hostels across London. And when my mum came to faith on Alpha in my teenage years, I thought and I hoped that it was a phase that would pass. And it didn't, obviously. <laughs> the faith that she introduced me to, Jesus, who she introduced me to, was good news for my life. Because I was 15 at the time, and I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea who I was meant to be, what the purpose of my life was. If I was doing my friendships right, I really had no clue. And I was also just feeling a bit let down. Um, I was feeling let down by a dad who wasn't really present, and by a family that was quite messy, and by circumstances that didn't look as though I hoped they would look. And I hadn't really seen this kind of concept of faithfulness in my life. And so when I started going to church as a teenager and we would sing songs like we just have done about Jesus being faithful, I couldn't get it. I just couldn't understand it. And maybe you're here this morning or you're watching online and you too are struggling to understand how God can be faithful. Maybe it's the stuff going on in the world, war, conflict, poverty. Maybe it's your own circumstances at the moment. Where do we go when our mental health is in a really low spot? Or when that relationship that we've worked at for a really long time feels like it's beyond repair? Or the job that you really wanted and prayed for has just been given to someone else? Or when someone you love has just received a horrible health diagnosis? Or maybe it's even more than that. Maybe there is a single event in your life and that makes it feel impossible to understand God's faithfulness in the face of trauma or of guilt or of shame. This morning, I want to suggest from this passage three ways that we can depend on the faithfulness of God. The first is to trust in God's promises. The very start of this passage, verses 16 and 17, say, people swear by someone greater than themselves, and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. We can find God's faithfulness in his word. When you read the Bible, what does it say? Growing up, I was a top class haggler. I spent my days making deals. And if you're here with kids, you probably know how this goes. 
I, the best deal I ever made with my mum was when I was about 13 years old, we went up to Nottingham, which is where our extended family are. And I'm not normally a dog person, but a dog in the family, a, a dog owned by someone in the family, um, had just had eight puppies. And I lay my eyes on this tiny golden Labrador. She was so small, she'd fit in the gap between the sofa and the floor. And I lay my eyes on her and I was like, I want to take her home. So I turned to my mum and I said, Mum, please can we take this puppy home? I promise I will walk her every day. You do not need to worry about a thing. This is my dog, my responsibility. Hand it over to me. I just need you to take this dog home. And obviously we got home with this puppy and the excuses started rolling in. I would walk the puppy, but I'm too tired. I would walk the puppy, but I'm busy doing 13 year old things. I don't have time for a puppy. I would walk the puppy, but I already made plans. And this, along with a whole bunch of other deals with my mum, made her realise over time that even when I made a promise, it was highly unlikely to mean anything. So she stopped making deals with me, which was sad. <laughs> People make promises all the time, but how do we know if they're worth believing? Sometimes people will try to back up their promises. They might try to make them sound more reliable by adding something to them. And these verses reveal to us that God has done that for us over centuries. In these verses, we read reference to the promise that God made to Abraham, which was, surely I will bless you and multiply you. He starts by giving this promise. And then just in case we missed it, he goes on to confirm it with an oath. Isn't that kind of him? So he promises and then essentially promises again, just in case we weren't sure. We read in verse 16 that people often swear by someone greater than themselves. But God cannot upgrade this promise to make it more reliable. He can't swear by someone greater than himself. So he just swears by himself. He made it so that no one can add to the promise. No one can add any value or take any value away from it. He makes the promise. And God's promises are not like my promises. They're unchangeable, they're unshakable, and they're forever. And kind of avoiding getting too deep, I use the word promise really lightly now in my life because I have some things kind of ingrained in my memory from growing up. I remember being um, eight years old and sitting in my bedroom, looking out of the window at the drive outside, thinking that my dad might turn up when he'd promised that he would. And often he didn't. But every time I hoped just a teeny tiny bit that this time might be different. And I don't know what comes to your mind when you think of people making promises. But we often put the doubts that we have, the fears that we have onto God. But when God makes us a promise, we don't have to hope that he is who he says he is, because he just is. One of my favorite promises found in scripture is Matthew 11, verses 28 to 29. It says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And when I feel a bit flappy or impatient or a bit irritable, these are the words that I turn to. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And in that moment, sometimes what I do, which is a bit cheeky, but I do it, I hold God to his word. If I feel like I'm impatient and irritable and I'm not catching a break, I turn to God and I say, God, you told me that you would give me rest. And I think what happens in that moment is it becomes almost this prophetic moment of acknowledging the things that God has promised to you and speaking them over your life and your circumstances. God, you said you would give me rest. But we can't call upon the promises of God if we don't know what they are. I'm, I get quite stuck on song lyrics, you know. I don't know if you've ever had this. Um, when you hear a song and you really like it, but you can't quite decipher what the words are, um, this happens to me really often, normally in the genre of rap. I... I love a good rap song, I really do. Um, and one of my life goals is to be able to keep up with like 
Dizzy Rascal, Wiley, Governor B. He was here earlier, I was so embarrassed. Um, that is one of my life goals. And in lockdown, I had a bit of spare time. And so one of my hobbies became um, Googling the lyrics to songs. And basically what I do is line by line, section by section, I'd read the lyrics and I would memorize them. And then I'd gradually get further and further and further along through the song. And by the end, I was like, you know when kids learn a dance routine and they run up to their parents like, mom, dad, watch me. That was me with my housemates. I have built up quite a good repertoire of rap songs that I can now join in with. Do you want to hear an example? I, I was joking, but I now... Okay, does anyone know Dizzy Rascal? Okay, I'm ready. What's up, darling? I've been keeping my eye on your movement. Does anyone know this? <laughs> River improvement. How are you? Guys, I needed you to join in. <laughs> There's more. I'll show you later, maybe, if you make it to the end. If we know what the words of Jesus are over our life, then we can pray them over our lives, over our friends' lives, over our families' lives. So my challenge today is, do you know the promises of God? Do you know what he said to you? And if you know them, do you trust them? The second thing we can do to depend on God's faithfulness is to know what God has done. Verse 18 says, God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. God wants to greatly encourage us this morning. My um, songwriting career started and ended quite abruptly when I was 11 years old. I had put off tidying my bedroom all weekend um, I'd, again, the excuses coming out. Um, eventually, my mum and my stepdad, who were trying to be very helpful and lovely, decided to come and help me. And as soon as they got into my bedroom, I realised that their method of tidying up was completely different to mine. Um, see, if it was me, I'd just kind of move stuff around so it looked tidier. I would polish around the objects that were on the shelf became very obvious they weren't going to do that. They were pulling things out, clearing stuff out, ended up with bin bags full of stuff that they thought I needed to get rid of by the end. And a bit of time into them helping me, I saw my stepdad being very helpful and lovely head towards the space under my bed, which was the space where I kept my personal things, which I didn't want anyone to find. I thought it was a safe space. I thought no one was going to go there. He reached under, pulls out this piece of paper, starts trying to read my handwriting, and reads out what I had written. Now, this was around the time where I had my first proper crush. It was a guy in my year seven class called Vin Lee. I've never told him. If he's here, <laughs> you know now. <laughs> um, and what I decided to do was rewrite the lyrics of a popular song by the Pussycat Dolls with Vinley in mind. And so my stepdad stands aloud and he says, you are my baby love, my baby love. You make the sun come out. Oh, Vin, you make us beautiful. And I went red and red and redder. I was so embarrassed. And eventually I decided that the only thing, the only way I could possibly respond to this level of embarrassment was to pack my bags and run away from home. So that's what I did. I fled. And these verses are speaking to those of us who have fled. But the original word used is catafuego which means to flee for refuge. But the implication of this word is not that, we have, not that we're fleeing currently, it's that we have fled and we have arrived at the destination. In doing the action of fleeing, you have already arrived at your destination. So if you have come to Jesus and you've taken him up on that Matthew 11 promise of coming to him and finding rest, there is nothing else you need to do. A few years ago, I worked for a bit in Greece, and um, it was at the time where there were lots and lots of refugees coming from all over the world to Greece. And I was doing another job in the day, but sometimes in the evenings, I'd go and we'd spend some time um, just hanging out with people and chatting. And we met this group of teenage boys who had come together from Eritrea. And gradually, over time, um, they started asking questions about faith and Jesus. And um, a few of them, three of them, asked to be baptized in the sea. So we did that. 
And I remember baptizing one of them. And as he came up from the water weeping, the words that he said were, Jesus has been there. And it was almost this moment of realization that God had been there, a realization of what God had done for him. What do these passages say to those who have fled? They say you can have hope. But again, it's not just hope as we know it in our human world. All throughout the New Testament, all throughout the book of Hebrews, hope is certain. The word used is alpidos. And the way that translates to is expectation of what is sure. What do you feel sure about? You feel sure about your future? your job, your relationships. Maybe there are things in your heart or in your life that you are longing for God to do. I know I've got myself saying, God, if you just did that thing, then I would know that you're faithful. We can be sure about, and we can depend on God's faithfulness because he has done everything already. I wonder what it would look like for us to realize that in this moment right now. When we pray to him, we have full access. The Bible says when we ask, we will receive. So if you're holding back because you're waiting for God to do more, can I offer you this reminder of God's faithfulness? Could we be a church who are greatly encouraged to take hold of the hope offered to us with both hands? Can we go all in? Finally, we can depend on God's faithfulness by encountering God's Son. Verses 19 and 20 say, We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever. Have you ever found yourself somewhere where you feel like you don't belong at all. This seems to happen to me a lot. A few summers ago, I was offered some tickets to a festival, um, but they weren't just normal tickets, they were artist tickets. And so it wasn't focus, (laughs) just to clarify. So you kind of camped with all of the artists together. You got your food included. It was a whole package deal. It was lovely. And so what would happen is after a day of like screaming along to our favorite songs, getting all sweaty and gross, we would um, go back to our tent, try and glam up, and then we'd turn up to this dinner. And there was no seating arrangement at dinner. You just got your food, and then you sat wherever you wanted. And so me and my friends sat down, and a few minutes later... I kid you not, Bon Jovi sat down next to me. And I don't know much about Bon Jovi, so I was really like trying my best with the small talk. Um, And after a few minutes, he turned to me, looked me in the eye and said, so what band are you in? (laughs) And I desperately wanted to say the Pussycat Dolls. But I couldn't. I went so embarrassed. And all I could think in that moment was, I should not be here. I am somewhere where I don't belong. And in the Old Testament, we read about the tabernacle, this space that was divided into the holy place and the most holy place. One person could enter this space once a year, the great high priest. The rest of the time, this space, the most holy place, was hidden by a big, thick curtain. His presence was hidden from us. These passages retell us what has been done for us, both on a micro level, what has God done in your life, but also on a macro level, what God has done for us through Jesus's life and death and resurrection. Through Jesus, we see God. Through Jesus, we are invited into an encounter with God. He made a way. And unlike the Old Testament, this is no longer something that somebody else can do on your behalf. This is an invitation that is extended to each of us that only we can respond to. This is the hope that we have. And we have this hope because Jesus entered on our behalf. He became the great high priest forever and we were given the Holy Spirit who gives us access So when life gets a bit shaky, we have this hope. It is sure and it is steadfast. 
And we can both find our hope and place our hope in a faithful God. An encounter with Jesus is what does that. Tells us that the faithfulness that we find in God is not just a temporary feeling that we find here. We can be assured and we can know with our whole being that God is faithful. This is why we come here together or we log in online each Sunday and we pray that prayer, come Holy Spirit. This is why we encourage you to join groups and teams. This is why we set aside a few days in the summer where we go away together to focus. Because life can be so busy and we need to be intentional about carving out these spaces to encounter Jesus. I mentioned earlier that when I first went along to church, I found singing songs or reading Bible verses about God's faithfulness really difficult to understand. And for me, there wasn't like a solid moment that I can point to where I say, that's the moment I understood God's faithfulness. But he is so kind and he is so gentle and he did it over time through a series of encounters with him, through day to day coming to him and saying, God, will you show me that you are faithful? I've realized over time that it is in God's nature that he is faithful. So when we doubt or we get frustrated with our circumstances, or we feel like we're let down by the promises of the world, can we make an encounter with Jesus our priority? Verse 19 says, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. And it goes right on to say where we find it in the inner sanctuary behind the curtain, in the holy place, in an encounter with Jesus, which we now have total and complete access to. This is where we find our hope. Have you had an encounter with Jesus? Have you let this knowledge of a faithful God go from your head to your heart? Do you know that his faithfulness is so much bigger than any of your circumstances? God is faithful even when you feel overwhelmed and your mental health is all consuming. God is faithful even when a relationship doesn't work out as you hoped it would. God is faithful even when you feel burnt out, when work feels exhausting and you can't see a way out. God is faithful even when health diagnosis come your way. So even when we forget, can we turn our hearts and our minds to trust his promises, to realize what he's done for us, and to prioritize an encounter with his son? In Jesus' name, amen. Can we stand together? And we're going to make space now for that encounter with Jesus. And so you might want to do whatever you have to do to make yourself available. I find it helpful to close my eyes. We're just going to pray that prayer. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, into this space, into wherever people are watching online. And we're going to spend a bit of time just waiting to see what he wants to do. But I think there might be some people that you just know that you need an encounter with Jesus. That you came in here this morning, you need prayer, you want to meet with him, you want this great encouragement. If that's you, and whether you're on the balconies or down here, do you want to just begin coming forward? There'll be a team who will pray with you. But if you just know that what you really need is an encounter with Jesus, we'd love to pray for you. You can push past the people on your aisles. If you're up on the balcony, it will take about 10 seconds to get down here. It will be worth it. If you know that today you want to meet with Jesus, would you make your way to the front? Thank you. I get the sense that there are some people 
who, um, when I spoke about there being a single life event, which makes it hard for you to understand the faithfulness of God, there's something that you have been praying about for a long time and you just still don't get it. If that's you, we'd love to pray for you. If you make your way to the front, there's lots of space. No one will ask you what it is. We just wanna bless what the Holy Spirit is doing. Come, Holy Spirit. I get a sense that um, when I described myself at 15, and I used that line, I, I had no idea what I was doing. I think there are some people here and you thought in that moment, I have no idea what I'm doing. We'd love to pray for you. If any of these words or pictures or if you just need prayer, would you make your way to the front? Come Holy Spirit. I have a picture of um, like clenched fists. And I think there might be some people here, you feel quite angry at God. This could be linked to the word about that single event, but I think there's some people here, you just feel really angry. And even this encouragement to come for prayer, you're, you're resisting because you feel too angry at God. We'd love to pray for you. still in your space as the band begin to play um, can I encourage you to just receive the Holy Spirit is meeting with people all across the room and so you can come to him I'm not sure if there's someone here in, in the room or online, you actually have a brain scan this week. And there's a bit of confusion around even the doctor or the department um, that you're gonna have this kind of scan and, and it's actually giving you real anxiety. And I just really sense the Lord saying, I'm with you. I will be with you in the waiting room. I'm with you in the process. I already know the doctor. I'm, I've got your life in my hands and you can trust me. And that is a promise. The Lord is not going anywhere. Jesus is with you. I, saw, I think there's um, someone here, and, and actually you're here today, or maybe you're watching online, because someone told you you will be able to have an encounter with God, that like you'll be able to do, there'll be something, something will happen. And that's why you're here today, because you came because you thought, oh, something's going to happen. And and we'd love to pray for you. First of all, we'd love to pray for you. If that's you, we'd love you to just come forward and we'd love to pray that you'd be filled with God's Holy Spirit. But I, it may be, uh, but I think there's someone who, um, like you feel like you have been going uphill. It's just been hard. The last few months, you have just been, every step has been heavy. It's been challenging. And it's like you've been wearing a really heavy backpack as well. It's, it's like you've been carrying so much burdens. And when Nikita said that promise that God says, come to me and I will give you rest, you were like, is that possible? And I think God wants to show you today. He wants to meet with you and show you that he can lift that burden off you. If that's you, please do um, come forward. We have prayer team online as well. We'd love to pray with you online. If that's you, do come to the front. continue in worship.
We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. And his name is Jesus. Why don't we lift up a shout of praise to the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are our hope, firm and secure. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that your promises you will keep us firm and secure and we rest in you in Jesus name and now for the blessing may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain you both now and always amen Oh man, what an amazing service and um, such a great sermon from Nikita. Um, if any of you would like someone to pray with you, then some of you have already put prayer requests in the chat and I would encourage you to use the chat or you can click the link that's in there too. Head to hdb.org forward slash live stream prayer and we have a team that would love to pray with you right now. There's a team there praying for you right now or maybe you have a request uh, that comes up during the week. You can send an email to prayer at htb. Dot org and the team will pray uh, pray for your request right there. Yes. Great to be with you. If you just joined us, uh, my name is Tom. I'm Jess. Hello. And uh, we're so thrilled you've joined us. This is HTB, our live stream run here every 11.30 on a Sunday morning. It's great to have you with us. It is great to have you with us. Um, we, we've been talking about a lot of things. It's worth, it's worth to note next yes. week. Yes, note. This is a very serious announcement for next week. Um, there is road closures. There is, there are. There will be. Closures. There will be road closures next Sunday. I believe next Sunday is the 29th. It is. Ride um, London. Ride London. It's a little bike bike ride. Yep. Like the, the Tour de France of East London. Perfect. <laughs> Tour de East London. <laughs> um, we have a map coming up, I believe. Here's the map. Um, here's a map with some lines and some dots, which Tom will explain. It comes in from Essex. Basically, if you're coming in from East London to m on next Sunday, you might need to be aware of this little map, but you can check out the map live on their website, which is ridelondon.co.uk. And of course, you can see here all our six, and six different sites across London. We've got one there up by Portobello Road Market, which is our HDB Dug on Away site. <laughs> Just lived near there. We've got HDB Brompton Road, which we're in right now. Uh, and then we've got uh, HTB or St. Luke's Earl's Court. Yeah. We've got HTB Queensgate, HTB Court for Gardens, and HTB Onslow Square, all running services next week. So perhaps one of the services will work better for you next Sunday, 29th of May. Or of course. <laughs> I was looking at the map and my face was just like... <laughs> <laughs> very, I felt very like... Very scary um, at the screen. I, I felt like... Because we were doing all of this, like a, a weather person. It's like, and if you can see the map here, then you can do all this. Um, anyway, <laughs> seriously though, make a note of it in your make diaries. Make Because right, there's nothing worse than getting in the bus at your allocated 45 minutes, realising it's going to take you an hour and 45. What a mare, we've all been there. Um, anyway, Alpha. Alpha. He's... Um, Back again, I was going to say starting, it's already started, week but it is three. back again for week three this Wednesday. And it's not too late to join or invite friends along. Why don't you head to hdb.org 
forward slash alpha um, to find out some more information. And on Friday, Ooh. we've got our youth all in from 7 till 9 p.m. So if you're in school years year six to year 13, or you know anyone in those school years, please invite them along. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be a blast. And if you head to H... H oh, it's not a website at HTB Youth on Instagram, you can see a little yes. teaser videos where um, myself, Tom, and a few members of the team adorned ice cream outfits and we ran around London. We got into a taxi. It was, oh, it was so much fun. People took photos of us People by Big Ben. It was great fun. Oh, because we're having so a free ice cream van yeah, it wasn't just, on, on Friday. We'd have probably done it anyway, but yeah, there's, there's, a it, there's a link. Anyway. <laughs> Come along, it's free. We'd love you to book a ticket so we know how much ice cream to get. Oh, yes. Uh, it'd be a great talk as well, an interview with Claude Jackson, yeah. who has spoken before at HTB. He's on the clergy team and he's written a book called From Guns to God. So he's going to come and speak to us there. 7 till 9 p.m., HTB Elmsdale Square on Friday. We have a guest. We've got a special guest in the room, Jess. Before we bring on the guest, sh should we just make another mention of Focus? Let's talk about Focus. Focus. Sorry. He stood up and he sat back down. Um, focus, if you were here at the beginning or if you were here in the middle of the service, you should have heard someone talk about Focus, which is our church network's extended weekend away from the 28th of July to the 31st of July on a new... I was going to say platform, a new site, a new showground. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be Community, fantastic. great food, worship. If you don't know anyone, that's all right. Book a ticket and you'll meet people there. Hey, we did four minutes of just the best of focus and what we enjoy and how it all makes sense at the very start of this live stream. So if you glamping. scrub all the way back to the start, um, we'll be there. And we were talking actually about whether you're glamper or camper. And I think at the last count, 68% of those watching this morning are glampers. Make that up. No, oh, I looked at it. Good knowledge. It's great to have you with us, glampers, and all campers Ooh. are welcome to. <laughs> but now we've got a guest in the room. Yeah. Louis Dean, everyone is here. Welcome, Lewis. You might recognise Lewis because he hosts sometimes with Jess. Yeah. Um, never nice. with me, I don't think. No, this is no. normally. Been on yes. the couch of Hello, mate. Nice. Yeah, I feel like we're having a school photo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we did it. Good. Um, Lewis is here nice. because he helps, uh, well, he runs HV College, which we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks, and we thought we'd get him on to tell us a little bit about it. Uh, but, Lewis, you're also a semi professional footballer. A very long time ago. I just noticed your newspaper, which had Sunderland on, so uh, I'm still still grieving the I'm defeat so yesterday. I'm a Wickham fan. I'm a Wickham fan, yeah. But I love the football, and um, yeah, I'm still recovering from the from the game yesterday. It's okay, it's okay. HTB College. HTB College. What is HTB College in a nutshell? Please, thanks for having me. Um, HTB College um, is a, a chance over the year to come and hang out at HTB um, with phenomenal teaching. We have amazing people from HTB that come and uh, teach on a Monday and then you get to experience life of HTB um, here on a Tuesday and a Wednesday and then you get involved in some of our services on a Sunday. And it's a great opportunity um, to deepen your relationship with Jesus. Uh, for some people, it's an opportunity to develop your gifts in a ministry and experience in church. And then finally, for some people, it's discovering your call. And maybe some of you might be uh, thinking about what would it look like to be at HCB and what would it look like to work at HCB and what is God calling me to? Um, and it's an opportunity over the year to, uh, to come and find out a little bit more that God has planned. Look at that, everyone. If only come for those three Ds, you will have a three great days. time. It's multidimensional in, um, in its work. Big word. Have a great time with us if you come along. Um, Lewis Dean, I'm not sure if you know this, but you popped up on my TikTok for you page the other day oh, because you. you were playing a game at college. We were. We were playing a bit of Human Bop It. You guys ever so played? Great game. Fun. Yes, I've played. We, do that. we could play now, couldn't we? <laughs> we finish the live stream a bit. Of bop oh, what it. a shame. We might run out of time. <laughs> uh, um, Lewis, if you could, so a part of HDB College is coming along for the discipleship year and then being placed on one of the fields, streams. If you could be placed on one of the streams, one of the teams, which one would you decide? Yeah, so there's a load of different placements, loads of uh, streams you can get involved with, like kids, youth, students, alpha, discipleship. Um, for me... Um, you are sandwiched between two youth oh, pastors. Oh, uh, it's, it's got to be the youth team. Yay! Or live stream team. Just, just out. The youth Woo! team is phenomenal. So, um, And the live stream team. Come yeah. on. Come and work with these guys. That'd be fun. Come and sit on the sofa with you two. What a day. <laughs> Um, Lewis, what's your favourite food truck at Focus? We were talking about that earlier. Tom said the cheese toasty. It's actually the reason his son is called Milo. Um, mine is the noodle van. Very good. Mine was, uh, I can't remember what it was called, but it was the German sausage stand. Oh, It was yes. so good. It was like a oh, foot-long yes. sausage. Oh, my word. Yes. <laughs> we should say, we, we've... 
our Jack Murray who's producing this morning is in our ear talking and telling us what's going on and that's his favourite too and he's been he waiting told us that earlier of that van the German sausage wow. I can't remember what it was I actually don't called but that van oh I wish I was there Beautiful. I wish I was I was there I wish I remembered it is what I meant to say anyway carry on Tom please hey so come and join HV College and you're welcome from anywhere across the world if you're in London let us know we can take you out for a coffee and there's a web page you can check out htb.org forward slash HB College. There's also an Instagram account. There's an Instagram, yeah. There's lots of different ways to connect. Uh, please email me as well, yeah. lewis.dean at htb.org. Love to get in touch. lewis.dean at htb.org. And we'd love to see you here next year, starting September. Starting September, all the way through to Focus next year. Lots to look forward to. Come get involved. Hey, I did an internship when I was, when I was a young one, 18 in York. And my job there, I was the youth... Youth, they called it power assistant scheme. I was youth power assistant. And my, my paid job alongside it was the cleaner. So I cleaned the church. But you was, were the youth pastor? Yeah, and I absolutely loved it. Oh, part time youth worker, you part time cleaner. Cleaning. Love a bit of cleaning. So get involved and look, anything, anything could happen. Anything's possible. <laughs> Come and join us. From cleaner to head of youth for HTV. <laughs> Great, Jenny. We're all servants. So. Oh, dear. If you haven't already, why don't you subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell, and you can be notified anytime we release content or go live. And we're back here next week. Same time, same place. Can't wait to see you. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>